I'm at the Travellers Club in London with John Blushford Snell from the Scientific Exploration Society. Going to tell us a little bit about the adventures he's had over an illustrious life of exploration. John Blushford Snell, age 83. Well, Fantastic. this is the famous library of the Travellers Club. Uh, it, it's a wonderful meeting point, not only of explorers, but people who travel all over the world. Yeah. Tell me a little bit about what the Scientific Exploration Society is and um, how long you've been with this. Well, we like to say we're there to provide pioneers with a purpose because we believe if we're trying to find something, whether it be a lost city, a lost animal, a lost whatever you like, um, we need the help of the local people. So we've got to help them. Yes. So we assist the local people with medical work, dental work, that's very important, uh, and help them with schools and water supply and so on. And they help us, and the results of whatever we find, of course, help everybody. So, John, I notice you're holding a very fine map there. Uh, we use it regularly uh, when we're uh, putting people through the briefing weekends, and they have to go off and play a game at night looking for lost archaeologists or whatever it is, and map read their way over the fields in the dark. Sometimes the police get rather worried about it. They think we're all burglars crawling around <laughs> at night. But um, this is why we use splash maps in England. And of course, we do use them a lot considerably abroad. Just yes, this map, which doesn't, doesn't show as many features as you would endorse it. This is uh, one no, from Mongolia, quite. which we used in 2018 yeah. on the last expedition we did there. And as you see, it's, it's pretty, um, lots of... Um, Big on contours, hey? There are not many towns. Well, it's a wild, wild country. Yeah. And it's one of the, my favourite places to explore. Fantastic. And so how, how did you find this map useful? I would say that this is one of the most useful accessories for exploration that's come out in the last 10 years. You're marking it, and you always very kindly provide us with a sort of Chinograph-type pencil. Yes. Uh, this one has been washed, I think, and cleaned, and so we get the uh, markings off it but the surveyors that we have with us use these maps and will be in the future. That's terrific. Why Thank you very you much. Tell me, in your life of adventure, was there any one aspect that led you down this track and to, to create the SES Explore um, Operation Rally? My father was an army chaplain and, and uh, he traveled a lot, but um, when I joined the army and went to Sandus, I was very lucky. I was commissioned into the Royal Engineers and they, of course, make the maps for the army. I always remember those lessons, and indeed I remember the skills that they taught you, and that has helped me when I've been making maps in various countries, aided, of course, now by your, your splash maps. What is the thing that made you start to do those things? Hmm. And I was lucky in that the senior officers encouraged me to go on expeditions on condition that I took some of the young soldiers with me and inspired them too. And that really right. got me going until I went to Sandhurst as an instructor and the general there had me in and he said I want you to be the adventure training officer. Adventure uh, training officer, fantastic. And I said what does that involve sir? And he said I'll tell you, yeah. I want you to get as many of these blighters overseas for the benefit of their character hmm. and the least possible detriment to the empire. What would you suggest is the way that they keep a sense of adventure in their life after that expedition is over? and maybe that they keep adventure in their life from, from then forward? Well, the first thing, David, as you said, is that they've got to get some training. And I always recommend people go on an Outward Bound course or join Valley International or the, the British Exploring Society. And when they've done that, when they come back, they've got to face what we used to call on Operation Rally the fourth challenge. Yeah. What do you do now? Yeah. Well, the answer is you've got to go out and do something worthwhile. You've got to set yourself a challenge. And whether that be helping in your own country with um, children or old people or the community in some way, or going abroad and doing something to help people there. So I would suggest to people, if you keep your spirit of adventure going, by seeking out a challenge. And you can do it in many ways today, particularly with the environment and indeed with things like of course, the pollution of the oceans by plastic. I've got a number of uh, projects going on at the moment where young people are doing something really to try and fight this plastic pollution. Mm. But there's also the destruction of the rainforest, there's the destruction of wildlife, and of course there's disease. 
So the great thing is, as young people, is to find a challenge and make that your target and go for that. Okay, so challenge yourself every day and find a challenge that, yeah. that kind of um, gives you a route forward, perhaps. That's right. John. Thank you. You've had many, many adventures um, and probably more than 50% of them very wet, um, from what I've heard. So um, that suggests to me that perhaps there was one in your past where you might have wished to have had a splash map if one existed. So first of all, did one exist? And second of all, which adventure would have most benefited from it? Without doubt, the one that would have benefited most was the conquest of the Blue Nile in Ethiopia in 1968. The maps that we used on that had to be sprayed with some sort of preservative to protect them. They had to be coated with a sort of plastic. They were heavy and even then they tended to fall apart. I've still got one of mine, but it's pretty tattered and torn. Yeah. If we had one of your maps at the time, uh, it would have been immensely useful because it would have lasted and it would have been usable right throughout and it wouldn't have fallen apart. Yeah. So it's, it's the robustness of the splash maps that are terribly important and the portability, the fact that you can use it to wipe your head or whatever and there are all sorts of things you can do with it. Yeah. But you can make a scarf, put it around your neck, um, the girls love them. Uh, but they use it all the time. It's very useful yeah. as we found when we were mapping uh, and putting in various features mm. that of course you can't put on the map because you don't know they're there until we get no. there. But you give us the basic map yeah. and we use this as sort of the essence of our survey. Yes, excellent. And you make use of the, the pen as you as you say as well to, to, to mark in route mark in routes. Yes, and we use the pens, the we mark the positions and of course the pens you send are washable so after yeah. the map's finished we can take it home, put it through the washing machine. Yeah. It comes out nice and clean. Fantastic. John, okay. We ask this of all our great uh, expedition leader com uh, customers and friends. Um, but what would be the one thing that you would do to improve upon the splash map? I would say you might like to consider uh, spraying these maps in some way or injecting in some way them with um, mosquito repellent mm. or insect repellent. It may not last more than, uh, say, a few months. Mm. but uh, if it can always be replaced and be sprayed upon at the moment when I get them I, I tend to spray them with DEET and so on and it doesn't destroy them right but that would be a, a useful feature for people going into the hot and difficult tropical climates okay uh, I think we've known each other now for probably about five years and in that time maybe made about seven or eight maybe nine uh, nine maps mm. the expeditions are always um, incredibly exciting and <coughs> um, and we look forward to the photographs and the newsletters that you send back mm. so can you tell me a little bit about the next one our next expedition is going to be in the Bolivian Amazonas which is the uh, northeast of the country um, along the Beni River which runs down to another river and then on to the Amazon and here we're looking into archaeological sites some of which we believe have never been surveyed or studied or even seen wow. by outsiders. So you're but, finding lost cities? Well, I'm not say cities. There <laughs> might be a few small settlements yeah. or buildings. Or, uh, as I, I know one we're looking for in particular, we've heard stories of some amazing petroglyphs showing double-headed snakes on, carved on rocks. Wow. I know roughly where they are because we got information from the Indians there. Yeah. So we shall be looking for that side. And, of course, we're also looking into another strange creature they're said to be a very large alligator like creature um, which is threatening the people and uh, <clears throat> it's what we think is called a horned caiman right. it's got, they say it's got great horns on its top of its mouth and it jets water out of vents above its nose um, I thought this is another Loch Ness monster but I did some research and I found that in 1909 the Bronx Zoo actually had one so they had one and that we think that possibly what we've heard about now was thought to be extinct yeah and so we're going to look for this but of course always you need the help of the local people yeah and so we're refurbishing a school in a little village and we're putting in the water supply system <clears throat> and once again we're taking in dentists yes. because the people have very little free dentistry and of course they they do eat sugar cane and sweets and they've got pretty terrible teeth Right. So we've got doctors and dentists coming as well. Okay, so I'd, I would just like to say a, a, a big thank you to you, John, for giving your time to us today. Um, I think we've all learned a lot about maps, how we can get adventure into our lives and keep it in our lives. 
Um, I think you're an inspiration to us all and thank you so much for being so enthusiastic and being a great customer for Splash Maps. Thank you David and thank you very much indeed for all your kind help to us.